car to Roberts. Roberts gets away. Roberts is in. Touchdown Raiders. Hello and welcome to another CSD Fantasy YouTube video. Today, as you can see from the screen, will be about the Raiders. Since they have decided to move, but not yet done it, I refuse to call them anything but the Raiders. If you liked the video, please press that like button. I hope to have different graphics for next week, so keep an eye out next Friday. But we have a lot of players to get to, so let's just dig in. Car open! Oh, he's got Watford! That is a touchdown! Starting off, I will show you the opportunity pool that the players will have to share. I've analyzed all of their 2017 opponents' defenses over the last two years and put together how many pass attempts and rush attempts they will give up and put that in relation to the Raiders' trends from the last three years. With this, the Raiders will pass the ball 593 times next year and run it 391 times. Dividing this up and using the trends, we get a target share and a share of carries. With these numbers, we can see how the respective players will most likely perform next year. If you disagree with my placement of any player, let me know in the comments. Catch made, Seth Roberts spinning into the end zone, touchdown Raiders! I recently got asked why Carr wasn't higher on my floor rankings and why I wasn't higher on him in general. Uh, my numbers are the only thing I use when drafting, but I consider a lot of my numbers and not just the floor rankings or not just the score projections, so he can have value outside of those things. And as you can see, I think he can score as much as 286.5 fantasy points next year. It is just that his one game floor is much lower than other quarterbacks that have the same potential. Carr. Beasley chasing. That's caught for a touchdown. Lynch is back. I will put a link down below so you can find a more in-depth analysis of him. But to summarize, I think he can be a really productive fantasy running back if he can stay healthy and he can be somewhat the same guy he was before he left. Crowd silent now as opposed to when the Saints have the ball. Oh, look at this run! What a run! Marshawn Lynch! Still oh. on his feet! Has blockers now! He's dancing his way for the touchdown! Uh. I actually read a tweet yesterday from at Fantasy ADHD that both of these players are practically free in MFL right now, and I thought it would be a good idea to put them against each other. Comparing their targets, receptions, and runs with Richard as the running back two and as Washington as the running back three, we of course see a small advantage for Richard. If I would have put Richard as their RB3 and Washington as the RB2, the total fantasy points they would have combined for would have been lower than it is now. Richard, according to my numbers and numbers in general, is the more productive fantasy back, so having him as RB2 made more most sense to me. Jalen Richard. He's loose. Jalen Richard. It's gonna be a touchdown. 75 yards! To the rookie. Look at him go! Washington oh. for the touchdown! Now as the Raiders wide receiver number one, Michael Crabtree. I know it might be odd to have Crabtree at the wide receiver number one, but I've chosen him because he has had more targets than Cooper over the last two years. The disparity, however, is not too big, and Crabtree will see roughly 144 targets and catch 83 of them. He will have 910 receiving yards, 45.6 points from all touchdowns, and 136.6 points in total. A number that is extremely close to the person we will take a look at next. Olawale in the backfield, low snap. Oh, and he gets the touchdown! Michael Crabtree! Two-yard touchdown reception! Sly Cooper is just behind Crabtree with 130 targets and 74 receptions. Even with 14 fewer targets, he has a chance to finish just 0.6 fantasy points behind Crabtree. 
This is calculated from Cooper's previous touchdown production, so I could see him overtaking Crabtree if his touchdown rate just rises a little bit. Wonder if Merciless a little out of gas playing the altitude tonight. Amari Cooper run after the catch, run into the end zone. Touchdown and the lead for the Oakland Raiders. After looking at Jared Cook's production, I decided not to focus on him in this video. With a production that would have placed him as the 33rd tight end last year, I just saw no point in it. Carr's potential top 10 finish intrigues me. I will have to take this into account and put in relation to his low floor number. He could be a guy to draft if the safer quarterbacks go early or if you wish to stash him if your guy fails to deliver. About Marshall Lynch, I feel like I need to say again that all these predictions are based of 16 games of full health. I cannot predict Beastmo's health and we don't know exactly what shape he's coming back into, so take his projection with a pinch of salt. The receivers are extremely interesting for next year and I will happily monitor their ADP over the next few months to see which one will be the cheapest. First and goal for Oakland, Carr rolling right, throwing end zone, diving catch caught, touchdown! Thank you very much for watching, please leave a like and subscribe, everything is very much appreciated. If you have questions about the numbers behind the projections, leave a comment below and I will get back to you. Check out Instagram and Twitter for more charts and numbers with links down below. Go to csdfantasy.com for more fantasy numbers such as AFC West's market share analysis. And as always, the spreadsheets are dark and full of terror.